Hello there and welcome to a, well, something a little bit different. Normally I'm not one for making, you know, live recording versions of, you know, videos where I'm working in Maya and I thought, yeah, today I'll try something different. Uh, just a quick note, as I recently got a new hard drive, a new solid state drive, and uh, I'm just testing out what it's like to record to it based on, you know, starting recordings, ending recordings, that sort of stuff. Uh, also high frame rate as well. Um, but that'll be something else and that will be uploaded. But uh, yeah, so I thought I would uh, sort of do a tutorial on something uh, something that I've been doing for Haven or things that I've been doing for Haven. Uh, this one in particular we saw, we, you will have seen in the, in, uh, the introduction is a, uh, a monitor, a screen or a television or anything really. And uh, I'm just going to be showing you how you guys how I did that uh, or how I made that and uh, how you yourself can do it. So I'll give you little pointers on how I made certain aspects of the screen or how I made certain aspects of the stand. It's a very basic model just for my first time making a tutorial. Um, I'm sure as if this goes down well it'll probably make more and they'll get a little more complex as we go. Uh, but for now just starting off basic. Um, so yeah, uh, first things that you're going to really need to know is you can have a basic uh, knowledge of using Maya, so you're gonna need to know how to rotate cameras and you know use rotation movement uh, scaling. Uh, you'll also need to know how to use the extrude button, and you'll also need to know about material basic materials and rendering. This is really just going through the process of creating the shapes and uh, modeling them into place, so that uh, so that we can you know make make our screen. Uh, the screen that I'm going to make here in the tutorial will be different from the one that uh, was in the, the rendered uh, preview before. Uh, that's because the one I did in the rendered preview uh, is an actual asset that I'm going to be using for uh, Haven and it's I haven't got the, the, the I haven't got the recordings of when I was you know doing that model so I just thought uh, I may as well just make a fresh one from start and show you guys the uh, basics. So first off, we're gonna make sure that we have our camera at the right distance and we're going to start by creating a polygon uh, cylinder. So first off, with polygon cylinder, uh, we just created that in the uh, polygons tab. I should have that on modeling. Uh, polygons tab, cylinder, and that's the basic stuff. We're gonna go over to our channel box and we're gonna add a few things that are gonna, yo. Know, let us define some some things. So first off, we're going to change the subdivisions on the axis to 30. Uh, we're going to get a subdivisions height that should stay as 1. And we're going to turn the subdivision caps off by typing 0 into that box so that we uh, don't have any uh, divisions up here. Uh, basically, the top is an N gone. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to scale it down to about there. This is just creating the base for the monitor to sit on. and. Uh, Basically, going from what I uh, from what I've you know, known monitors to be like, uh, monitor bases to be like, they're you know more like an oval shape rather than a circle. So I'm just going to scale it out sideways a little bit, and I'm going to scale in a little as well. Okay, next task is to select the face, and we're going to select this top face. So to get that, you just go uh, right, hold, right click, and face. And we have the uh, top face selected. We're going to extrude this in on itself. Now, you'll have noticed that uh, this has created a lot of polygons on, uh, on uh, in between, and uh, that's because I have the de default divisions of extrusion to be set to 9, so it'll have set 9 divisions between that. And what you're going to want to do is, yours will be default to 0, or default to 1, sorry. Uh, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, click divisions, drag, and uh, Bring that down. By the way, the version of my I'm using is version 2016, uh, student version mostly because this is educational and uh, I'm, I'm teaching you how to how to how to do stuff. So we've uh, scaled that down to about there, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this and scale the Z in. I think it's the Z. Scale in this way so we make it a little more circular, and I'm also going to push it back in on itself so that. Uh, because most monitors, I find they're not sticking out of the central point of the base, so that's you know that's what we're doing. So we'll move it to there, and that seems good. I'm also going to scale in this way a little bit as well, so it's proper circle. Scale out a little. 
Right. Next part is to uh, hit G, which is going to do another extrude. Basically, if you do a function in Maya, if you press G, you will uh, repeat the last command that you uh, did. So G, and I'm going to pull it out. Once again, I have mine set to nine, so I'm just going to yeah, bring that down. I'm actually going to do this to three times, I think, this time. So this is three divisions. Uh, I'm also going to scale up a little bit more. And now we're going to move on shaping this a little bit better. So I'm going to go right click edge and I'm going to select the top part. But you'll notice this is also selected these edges, which I don't want. So I'm going to shift drag select those. And I'm going to scale this in. Next, I'm going to rotate it. And this is where the monitor is going to uh, connect. So uh, you've noticed that uh, rotating it like this normally is giving us a very, very accurate uh, rotation, which I don't want. I want it to be. Uh, I want to be able to snap it to uh, to an axis. So I'm going to hold J and I'm going to rotate it. So you'll see it's uh, giving us more options as to our rotation. I'm just going to rotate it so that it's flat vertical. And uh, I'm going to also push this forward a little bit. Like so. Uh, sorry, Belmont, can't play Division right now, I'm doing a tutorial. Uh, I'm then going to take this one, but you'll notice drag selecting has done that again. So I'm going to just drag select these edges so that I have just the, the outer rim uh, selected. And I'm going to rotate again. I'm also going to push this one back a little bit. Uh, and make it look like sort of uh, a, a crazy design. Uh, that's all about this sort of thing. Uh, you making your design, you know, unique uh, to you. I'm also going to scale it in a bit like that, and then I'm going to grab this one, uh, shift select that, and I'm going to go like that. Do shift select those again, and there we go. So that's basically just a standard, you know, you know, model. Um, it's not great. I could probably get away with like you know, moving this stuff up, or this 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 uh, this edge loop here up, and back into place a little bit, and that's just gonna make it look a little bit neater. And uh, yeah, so the next thing we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna I'm gonna uh, preview smooth what this uh, object's gonna look like. Uh, you'll notice one thing in particular about around here and on the base. So we'll just select and go press three. Now you'll see that uh, the edges have you know sort of come in on themselves and make them you know look like a disc sort of thing, and uh, the same thing has happened up top here. Uh, what was once flat has become rounded and you know not nice, uh, and that's because of our geometry. If we were to smooth this, we would just create geometry in this space uh, where there's you know no no blockers, nothing to stop it from turning into a disc, or it's turning into a sharp edge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a few edge loops towards these edges uh, here, towards uh, edge, towards these two, ed between these two edges here. And that's basically gonna stop that uh, disc deformation from happening. Uh, so basically go to uh, edit mesh, no, mesh tools and insert edge loop. And I'm gonna select one of these vertical edges and I'm gonna push this edge loop up towards the top here. I'm gonna do two on each because I find that gives a nice sharp hard uh, hard uh, hard mesh uh, effect and it makes it look nice so if I just uh, then do this here I, t I tend to do just one here if it's on one of these types of edges here or faces here I'll do two but uh, for top and bottom uh, it's just going to be uh, one uh, you'll notice because underneath we don't have any uh, divisions we're going to have to put an edge loop in uh, a third edge loop here into this note to this one just to stop it from caving in on itself right so if we go back to object mode smooth that you'll see it's nice a nice hard edge that uh, isn't uh, deforming at all so we're going to repeat that process for round here at the base and uh, up here at the top <clears throat> So just like I did before, basically adding geometry where it is necessary just to make nice hard edges. And up here at the top as well. 
If you accidentally uh, end up clicking one of these ones on one of these edges here, you'll see it actually creates uh, more uh, more axis divisions, and we don't want that because we've already got our axis divisions that we need. So basically, make sure you're uh, using one of these uh, axis division uh, edges. Okay, now I'm gonna go back to object mode, give that a smooth, and you'll see it is nice and sharp edge but you'll also notice that uh, this has created uh, divisions in here so what we're going to do is we're going to use the uh, uh, cut tool or the edge cut tool um, to add uh, divisions in here like there is down here so uh, we're going to switch on the modeling toolkit which you can if it's not on by default down here and you press this button and it'll open up the uh, modeling toolkit and we're going to select multi-cut so basically the multi-cut tool will allow us to draw from edges or vertexes uh, basically uh, lines that we can use to cut into a face so we're basically going to cut into these we're going to try our best to uh, cut between the flat edges of this face. Sorry, every time you connect two, uh, connect between two, you press enter, and that's going to put the cut in. And once again, basically, this just is just creating a triangular geometry that we can use to uh, create our edge loops in, and that will effectively stop. The, uh, the morphing at the top here whenever we smooth. So you can just keep going through each one and it's a slow process but you know, it's necessary. Oh, that's a cut in space, we don't want that. So messing up there and finally up here so there you go you'll see we've now created geometry in the the top uh, top circle so now what we can do with this is we can go back to our mesh tools insert edge loop and I wonder why that is doing that now I guess we probably no actually no we shouldn't need some uh, we shouldn't do need that because it should be smooth now yeah, well, you're not going to see that bit anyway, but as long as it's flat, I am happy enough with it. So, let's uh, get to making our screen then. Uh, basically, the screen will be mounted onto here, and it will be you know, a 16 by 9 uh, ish widescreen monitor. We could probably do, we could probably get fancy with it, make it like a 21 by 9 and get, have it uh, rotated. Um, yeah, that's what we're going to do. We're going to make this a rotated screen, uh, so, it's a little, so it's a little bit different from what we saw in the preview at the start. So first off, we're going to create a cube, and we're going to shift it up out of the way uh, of our mesh, and we're going to push it inward first. Then we're going to scale it out, push it in a little more, because most flat screens are quite thin uh, these days, you'll have noticed. Uh, and I think that's pretty good enough. We'll take it down a bit and we're going to widen it out. So this is going to be like uh, one of those you curved widescreen monitors that you see um, and hopefully it should turn out alright. We'll probably use a, a bend deform uh, on it as well just to get it curved uh, and that'll probably be one of the last things to do. So uh, I'm going to quickly uh, create the screen part so we have a, a rim around the monitor um, but, we, but to do that we uh, extrude and we scale it in just a little bit. Uh, once again, I have to I have to turn my divisions down to one, and we're also going to scale it in on this axis a little bit, uh, just so that it's you know not uh, weird looking. Then what we're going to do is we're going to hit G again, and I'm going to push the the screen in a little bit. Now, not to worry, uh, you'll notice that maybe the stand will clip in. We haven't finished actually placing it yet. We're just modeling the screen. Once again, divisions down to one. And that should uh, be pretty good uh, looking. 
Um, I'm gonna push it out a little bit because that's maybe too close. Okay, there we go. Now, we have our model and we're going to add a few divisions so that we can bend it. Um, so basically to do that, we will insert edge loops. Uh, we're gonna uh, we're gonna insert them at uh, measured lengths. So we're gonna go to our mesh, insert edge loop, and we'll go to tool settings, and we're going to say uh, multiple edge loops, and we're gonna create maybe six, and this will basically insert six edge loops that are measured between them at each distance, and we're also gonna do the same. Uh, well, as you know, are we going to do the same? No, we're not going to do the same. But then we're going to cut, turn down uh, our multiples and I'm just going to add two in at each division. And that will allow us to, that'll give us geometry so that we can you know, bend it uh, as, 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 as we like. So we're going to select the object and we're going to deform and we're going to go to nonlinear bend. Now this is going to create a controller which is not really in the uh, most ideal position, uh, but if you go to your attribute editor, no, sorry, channel editor, uh, inputs, bend, uh, just up the uh, curvature, say, and find out what direction it is going. So to me, it looks like it is going this way. So it'll bend that, like so. So if I do that to four, yes, it'll bend that way. Uh, so what we need to do is we need to uh, rotate the controller uh, on this axis here, so that it's sideways. Oh, come on. There we go. Okay, so now if we uh, add curvature to this, we should be seeing an effect on the screen now. Yep, it's starting to uh, follow it. So I'm gonna say, give this uh, setting of about 10, maybe 15. Yeah, 15 looks good. So now we have our curved monitor. Now, we can't just leave it as it is because if we accidentally uh, click this deform or anything like that, then we might end up accidentally changing it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna select the monitor and we'll go to uh, edit, delete by type history. And basically that's gonna leave uh, this as the stock shape. We can't change that bend anymore. And uh, I, th I think it looks good as it is. Now we're gonna, we're not done yet. Right. We're going to add some uh, lights down here, or a light, because uh, you know most monitors have a little light on them that says you know it's on. So I'm going to create a quick cylinder, very basic, and I'm going to scale it way down, way 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 down, very small, and then I'm going to position it just uh, in front of where I'm, where I want it to be, and I'm going to rotate. Uh, 90 degrees on this axis. So once again, holding J to get the perfect rotation. Uh, there we go. And I want it to push in. Now we're gonna to need to scale it down a little more. Very, very small item. Uh, we could also change some stuff about it. So subdivisions, uh, we could probably take that down to 10 because you know, you're hardly gonna see the detail. And yeah, but it doesn't matter about the height or caps. So we're gonna leave that as is and we're going to uh, rotate again because of the curvature of the monitor and I'm just gonna hold J and rotate to there and I'm gonna push it in like so. So now we have a little uh, button or light and we're gonna give this so now we're set now we're pretty much done the last thing we really need to do is uh, fix up this uh, in terms of position wise so there we have it there, and we're going to smooth it, uh, smooth the stand. So mesh, and then smooth. Now we're only going to do one because I want this to stay as low poly as possible. The one for Haven that I that you saw in the preview at the start was a uh, slightly higher poly count, um, but it's not going to be necessary for this uh, for this stage. If you need to do something a little more high poly, then by all means go to uh, a second smoothing factor. But for for this project, it's one will be enough. 
Also, you shouldn't need to smooth the monitor because the bend will be taking uh, care of uh, the hard edges, as you can see. So now that we have that smooth, we're going to combine all three items, this and the button. We're going to combine, uh, no actually we're not going to combine yet because we need to do material. Uh, forget I said anything by combining just for the moment, we'll get to that at the end. So first off we're going to go right click, assign new material. And for this, uh, most new monitors are sort of like a little glossy uh, reflective material though. It reflects light and you know. It, it's you know necessary. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a blin, and I'm going to make it. Uh, let's do something a little bit different. I'm going to make it like a, a like a silvery color. So I should probably also delete the history on this one because it's uh, going to be ages to get to the material attribute. Uh, so let it delete by type history. There we go, blin1, we're going to rename that to blin underscore stand. And we're going to make this uh, like a, a shiny white color. Like so. Maybe it's an iMac screen or something, I don't know. Um, then we're going to go to uh, the monitor, the, the actual screen part, and I'm going to go to uh, right click face. This will allow me to select uh, these faces. Now if you're wondering what I did there is I uh, shift clicked uh, or shift or sh uh, clicked then shift clicked uh, two faces. Uh, first one was a normal click then the second one was a double click holding shift and basically that has uh, selected all of these uh, faces around the ring of the monitor and basically you can do that uh, multiple times uh, but if you're going to select more it's a shift click from there, from there on. So around and then all the back. Uh, so we're not, if you'll notice, I haven't really done much in terms of uh, back panel detail. Uh, that's because, as I said, it's not high poly. This is more for use in a smaller project or in a video game where you're not going to see like you know backs of the uh, backs of the monitor. Uh, if you want a tutorial on uh, doing that, then be sure to let me know, and I will uh, try my best to uh, make it so. And then I'm also going to. Shift double click this edge as well, this or this loop as well, face loop. And uh, yeah, so then I'm going to right click, assign new material again. Uh, in fact, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to assign existing material blin stand. And then I'm going to go into here and I'm going to rename the stand to blin uh, monitor underscore generic color. Just a, it's a good idea to rename your uh, materials as uh, as, a, as a habit because if you get into a project where you're using lots of materials you it's hard to find uh, specific ones if you need to if, if you come back to add more uh, so as for the actual screen part uh, we're going to select all of these individually you don't have to uh, select them like this uh, if you want you could probably go uh, double click here and turn off camera base paint, uh, camera base select, uh, turn off camera base selection, which I actually do. So I could have drag selected that. Uh, normally, if this normally by default this is on. Uh, sorry. Yes, if I had drag selected that, it would select the back ones as well. But what you can do is you can switch this on, so it's camera base. So whatever the camera sees, it will select. So there and it hasn't selected any of the back geometry. So that's a good little feature. Uh, you can get that by double clicking here or clicking on tool settings. And basically we'll create a second material for this. So assign new material and we're gonna create a, going to create a Lambert. Now this monitor is going to be off by default. So we're just going to, as I say, uh, create a sort of dark screen like it's off effect. So I'm just going to drag this down to sort of you know dark grays. Uh, I'm going to increase the incandescence a little bit, like so. Now in this view, it's going to look uh, rather daft. So uh, I'm going to um, give it a render, quick render, and uh, we'll see how it looks. Um, I'm going to use mental ray because it's usually the best render for high detail um, and materials. 
Uh, we're going to up the quality to uh, about 1 and the lighting quality can stay as is. Uh, I'm not going to turn uh, global illumination on just yet since this is a preview render just to see how it turns out. Okay, so I have clearly made the incandescence a bit too bright. Uh, so I can go back into my uh, material attribute. Uh, you'll notice because we, we've used, uh, we've selected these faces as the material, it has created the second material on this alongside alongside this object, uh, alongside the blim material color. Um, once again, I haven't actually renamed it, so that'd be something that I will need to do. Which I can't, <laughs> apparently. Uh, that's because it's Lambert 1. I was pretty sure. Oh, no, there it is, Lambert 2, sorry. Um, apparently Lambert 1 is still a thing on this monitor. Definitely did the bottom. Hmm, that's weird. I'll not dwell on the fact now. So, number 2, Incandet. Oh, I made Lambert 1 that. Okay. Sorry, let me just change that back to normal. Lambert 2 is <laughs> is the new one. I apologize, I made a big error there. Uh, it, remember, Lambert 1 is always the default ma material. Uh, you should never change it uh, because whatever whatever object you create thereafter will have that, uh, that same material applied. So make sure whenever you go to look for your second Lamberts, uh, you always pick the one that is labeled as Lambert 2, which I really should have noted on if I, if I had uh, gone to rename it. You can't rename Lambert 1. So let's just rename this uh, screen underscore uh, Lambert, or no, sorry, Lambert underscore screen. So let's darken this down. There we go. I should really also have taken notice whenever it didn't change color. Uh, that was silly of me. And we'll up the incandescence a little bit. There we go. That's ideal. You get a little preview here of what it should look like. Now, if we give this another render, it should look ideal. No, it's still very bright. Hmm. That is odd. Maybe it is the incandescence is causing the problem. Maybe the incandescence needs to be darker than that. Uh, I had never noticed that being a problem before. There we go. It's much more like what we were looking for now. Hmm. I'm not too sure. I can see like paneling on that, so I can see edges. Maybe we'll just turn incandescence off for the moment. Uh, oh, sorry. No, it was ambient color, not incandescence. What am I like today? I'm being silly. Uh, so just turn it up a tiny little bit, not too much, uh, otherwise you're not going to get the effect that you're looking for. Okay, and then render again. Aha, that is exactly what I was looking for there. So you'll notice that monitors, when they're off, they have a light, a sort of tiny sheen to them. Uh, that's what over here is looking for. You probably can't see it in the recording, but over this side is a little bit lighter than this side. I also see the material of the blin is reflecting the the rest of the stand uh, on, on the uh, is reflecting the stand on the base. That is what is uh, happening uh, to my monitor as I see it. Um, so yeah. Then for the final thing, we need to select our little light. You can't forget about that. You go to object mode, object mode. There we go. So we can select our little light. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to sign a new material and this time we're going to go for a surface shader and basically surface shader surface shaders are not affected by light so basically they're a flat color that aren't affected by light at all and basically what we can do is we can hang on I did not select surface shader uh, shading map that's a shading map sorry uh, surface shader and basically you're greeted with this and you can change the color of these and it'll look you know, the way you want it to it'll be flat on the preview 
uh, and that's okay. But if I was to render this, all you would get is the blue circle. And you know, most lights have a little bit of a glow to them. As you can see, flat circle, doesn't look right. So I'm going to just darken this down a little bit. And then for the out color, I'm going to pick the blue. And I'm also going to darken it down a little bit because the glow can be actually quite intense if it's too high. So let's render that again. And we'll see uh, the effect. There you go. Now that's quite bright. Uh, so I'm going to adjust the color again. Normally for me, if I'm using a glow color, then I need to darken it quite a bit. Render. And there we have it. That's a little more subtle and it's less noticeable. Um, I'm also going to scale down the size a little bit more. There we go. Oh, press F to focus on that. I'm gonna push it in a little more. There we go. So if I render that at a distance now, it should look a little bit better because there's less surface to cast the glow. Yep, that looks a lot better. Um, now you'll notice something that it's quite the the, the object is, is the detail is quite bright. If this is usually caused by this object, uh, this options up here, uh, sort of uh, focus and I forget the name. I forget the names of both of them. I'm being silly. Uh, this is re rendering is not my street, mostly modeling is, uh, but I will do rendering. Uh, this is something I've noticed with uh, 2016, Maya 2016, and it is a bit daft. I don't know why they use it, uh, but it's this uh, rendering type uh, or rendering filter. It's like, it's like, a, it's like a, uh, you know, uh, Snapchat filter. Basically, uh, you can either turn this off uh, manually or do that, or you can use RAW and it's pretty much the same result. Um, it's a color compression thing. Uh, so using RAW, it gets you the uh, accurate colors that are represented in the viewport. But they also, the viewport also has this option. So if you want, you may want to turn that off or just switch it to RAW. Uh, I usually just switch it to raw before I start modeling and then I get a decent representation of the objects. Now, doing so has darkened the colors of uh, the objects a little bit. So I'm going to go into the monitor and uh, just, you know, up the ambient color a bit just to make it a little bit wetter. And the same will go for here. Uh, da -da 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 -da. So Lambert screen. I'm going to just up the general color brightness as uh, as appropriate and then I'm going to give it a render and hopefully this should look good enough. No, the black is still quite black. Uh, well, that's, yeah, yeah, no, I'll, do, I'll need to do this. There we go. That's more like what I'm looking for. Yeah. So there you have it. I'm going to quickly set up a scene and do a high quality render of this uh, monitor. Uh, if you want to set up uh, your scene, I usually just use flat planes uh, and I scale them way out and then I duplicate and I rotate them uh, on their axis holding J so that I get an accurate, ooh, oh come on, holding J and I do the same again, uh, control D. Uh, scale, hold J, rotate, move it back a bit, shift select all three and assign new material and for this I'm just going to use a Lambert because I don't want any reflections uh, off of these. So uh, where's Lambert? L, Lambert and I'm going to make them white. In fact, uh, do I want to make them white? I'll make them like a light gray. There we go. Also, the final thing you'll want to do is shift select each aspect of your monitor. And just mesh combine. Yep, mesh. So mesh and combine. 
and that means that if you go to select your object again it's all one uh, if you need to uh, you know, separate them all again you just go to mesh and you can click separate and you'll get all of your items back the way they were the only way that you can stop this feature from working is if you go to edit uh, delete by type history uh, that will get rid of the uh, history that you combined it so it's better if you want to you know, keep working on an item uh, or any anything like that is you do that as the last thing possible because if you remember rightly we deleted our history for the screen and if we had combined them at that point it would not have been good so yeah just a little tip uh, something that I ran into in my early uh, early working with uh, modeling modeling and rendering and the whole shebang creating using Maya so the final thing then is we're going to create some lights and I'm going to create a uh, ambient light if I press B nope sorry wrong one uh, create light uh, area light point light nope create can't light dire directional light that's uh, that's the one sorry my mistake I'm also going to enable lights in the preview so that I can get a uh, an idea of where everything is so I'll do that. Uh, mostly, uh, uh, moving moving uh, directional lights does not change uh, these. These are usually used for like time of day alterations. Uh, basically, uh, yeah. I'm also gonna rotate it there a bit. Okay, and shadows, I'm going to enable shadows, uh, use ray trace, I'm going to select 4 on shadow rays and 4 on limit, and then I'm going to my setting, my render settings again, and I'm going to go down to legacy options, and I'm going to enable global illumination, and I'm going to set the accuracy to about 750. Um, anything else? Ambient occlusion? No, we'll not use ambient occlusion on this one. Uh, that should be it, and we'll give this a render. No, nope, it is not. I almost made made an error. Uh, it'd be HD 1080, and I typically just use uh, set the resolution to 300, uh, just for the sake of uh, using it. And let's frame our shot. So we're gonna I'm gonna select these two items here, and that basically just gives a frame where the a frame around uh, the view where it won't be rendered. So I'm just going to set it up here and I'm going to hit render and see how that turns out. So I'm going to cut until the render's finished and uh, yeah. All right, well, there you have it, everybody. Um, this is a low poly but high detail, uh, or no, sorry, high detail, low poly curved monitor with reflective materials and uh, spe uh, specialized uh, screen material for the off position. We also used a surface shader for the little blue light. You probably can't see it in this render, sorry about that. It'll be to do with the uh, white material that we used for the the, the, the monitor's main material. Uh, it shows up better on black materials as you've seen in the starting renders, or the renders at the start of the video. Um, I'm, not, I, I'm not too sure how I would change that. Uh, anything you can still see the little light is there if you look very very closely um, but other than that that's really it um, if you want to see a tutorial on modeling the the backs of the monitor uh, be sure to let me know and I will see you all later for more Maya stuff thanks for watching peace out